coral is not only an organism, it is an ecosystem, a host to a wide variety of organisms. It is what we call a symbiome. In order to better understand the coral symbiome, we use confocal microscopy, which allows us to observe the living coral in a non-invasive manner. Much can be learned from these observations, including the signature and distribution of innate fluorophores, the distribution and fluorescent emission of endosymbiotic algae, and the presence and characterization of coral larvae and associated epifauna. Therefore, we can look at the coral and all associated organisms as a whole and living entity. Here, only the innate fluorescence of the coral itself and its associated organisms is imaged. No dyes or fluorescent labels are used. The bright red coloring of this healthy coral is due to the fluorescence of chlorophyll contained in the endosymbiotic algae known as symbiodinium. These unicellular organisms provide the coral with photosynthetic nutrients and the coral in return provides them with necessary inorganic materials. The blue and green colors represent the coral's own fluorescent proteins. Time-lapse imaging shows us the movement of the polyps and the tissues that surround the polyps, known as the cenosarc. If you look closely, you can see tiny rotifers crawling on the surface of the coral. Confocal microscopy can give high-resolution images by eliminating light from outside of the focal plane. Layers of data from different focal planes, known as Z-stacks, can be collected and reassembled into three-dimensional images. Confocal images can clearly show the distribution of different fluorophores. Individual red dots of symbiodinium can be seen in the tentacles and throughout the cenosarc. The fluorescent protein, represented by the blue color in this coral, seems to be closely associated with biological structures containing nematocysts, or stinging cells. Using the confocal microscope also allows us to see inside the coral, such as this view of the lace coral polyps gastrovascular canal. A side view through this polyp's tentacles shows us the densely packed symbiodinium and bands of tissue that bind the tentacles together. In a close-up view of coral tissue, we can see the arrangement of symbiodinium and the green fluorescence of individual coral cells. As docile as coral may appear, they are actually very dynamic. Aside from moving tentacles, they can extend mesenterial filaments from their mouths. In this image, Combining fluorescence and transmitted light, you can see the mesenterial filaments moving inside the mouth of this polyp. Corals use the extrusion of mesenterial filaments to battle with neighboring coral, to catch prey, or in this case, to expel symbiodinium. Another important aspect of studying the coral symbiome is to identify its associated epifauna. This species of rotifer is one we often find when looking at lace coral. This one has a red fluorescing organelle, possibly from ingesting chlorophyll-containing phytoplankton. The coral symbiome often includes larvae, particularly if the larvae are brooded meaning retained by the maternal polyp until they reach a more mature larval stage. When larvae are ready to find a suitable substrate for settlement, a stage known as a planula, they use cilia to move themselves through the water. Here are a few examples of other species of coral under confocal.
Coral reefs are among the most threatened ecosystems on Earth. As temperature rises, corals lose their endosymbionts, leaving them in a severely weakened state. This process is known as coral bleaching. In order to reverse the global decline of our reefs, we need a greater understanding of the differences between species and the interactions between the coral, their endosymbionts, and associated epifauna.